My wife's addicted to shopping. She only used to hurt my credit cards, which was a big deal, but that's a different story. What she did this time's unforgivable. She took away all the years of money I've collected for our daughter's college fund, and I'm furious. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I don't know what to do. And the problem is, I can't discuss this with anyone I'm close with privacy reasons. I've been with my wife Andrea and my stepdaughter Cassie for eight years now. I love them both to death, but Cassie is a very brilliant young woman. Recognizing her potential, me and Andrea decided to put together a college fund for Cassie, so she wouldn't be crushed by debt. Over the years, it's amounted to about $200,000. Cassie is aware of this and is banking on it since she's trying to get into the Ivy League. To make a long story short, Last week, I found out that almost $170,000 of the money was missing from the account. Well, obviously, I freaked the duck out and asked Andrea if she knew anything about it. She teared up and said that she's been spending the money over the years to fund her spending habits. I was furious, but I had a moment of clarity. I've browsed these subs enough to know that an affair was possible, so I asked her if she was having one. She adamantly denied it and offered any proof I needed. Social media accounts, emails, her work phone, everything. She offered to show me the receipts as well. There was nothing that popped out as suspicious, and the math from the receipts added up as well, so I just let it go. But we still had major problems of the money being gone. She described herself as a shopping addict and the money for Cassie's account was just too tempting not to touch. She didn't make excuses, but offered no solutions. As stated before, I was beyond furious. She ruined Cassie's chances of going to college debt-free, and has changed the trajectory of her whole life. I asked her to stay with her sister while I tried to figure this out. Cassie was concerned about why she was leaving, but we just said we needed a little bit of space. I asked Andrea to come back home yesterday, and we had an extremely long discussion about how to handle this. She stopped me from talking and asked her for a favor. She asked if I could take the fall for her. For context, her and Cassie don't get along for a variety of reasons, and knowing how independent Cassie is, she'll probably leave right after college, if not daring. In fact, me and Cassie get along very well, and she comes to me for a lot of her issues. Andrea fears this will permanently drive Cassie away, and she doesn't want to lose her. I told her that before we even talk about that, she needs to acknowledge her mistake and own it. She needed to go to individual therapy, and we needed couples counseling. She needed to find a shopaholic support group, and that I would be controlling the finances from now on. She said those terms were steep, but fair. I said she needed to tell Cassie what she did, apologized and hoped for the best, but she refused and said she could never lose Cassie. She said I could survive the mistake, but she could not. I told her that in order to even consider me taking the fall, she needs to agree to my terms. I don't know what the hell to do. The last thing I want to do is lie to Cassie, but I don't want Andrea and Cassie to split up forever. And the worst part of this whole thing is that Cassie's life is ruined either way. And I don't know how to replenish the money other than maybe borrow from my 401k. Does anybody have any suggestions? Divorce is always an option, but I love Andrea. Despite her mistakes and me dating at age 52 is next to impossible. What's up guys, Mr. Redito, so this is a pretty dramatic story. There's an update for it, but first, on the original post, OP added two small edits at the end, so let's read those and then hop in the update. After everyone in here knocked some sense into me, I realized I can't lie to Cassie. I love her too much, and she deserves the absolute truth, no matter how ugly and how hard it is. I'll be talking to Andrea and telling her that we need to tell her the truth together, as a condition of us staying together, or else I will initiate divorce proceedings and tell Cassie anyways. 
Also, as someone suggested, I don't need her trying to flip the script on me, so I'll record our interactions going forward. Edit 2. I want to thank everyone here for really opening my eyes yesterday. You're right. I need to put Cassie first, and like I said, I'll be telling the absolute truth. Even if she gets mad at me and disowns me, at least I'll know I did the right thing. In addition, I'm going to pay for the college myself. I can pull money from a couple of places, such as retirement and inheritance, so it'll be okay. I have to live a little frugally during retirement and work a few extra years, then so be it. Cassie is worth it. I honestly doubt her mother's going to sell her stuff, so that's why I'm taking this route. As for Andrea, I've been criticized for wanting to let Andrea off the hook as so to speak. But it's easier to say when we're really deep feelings aren't involved. That being said, I don't think I can stay with her. What she did is horrendous, and she ruined our daughter's future for her addiction. We had a long discussion late last night, and I threatened divorce unless she told Cassie the truth. She begged me not to do this, but I put my foot down. And eventually she agreed, but only if I agreed not to divorce, and I helped to repair their relationship. I likely won't be doing either, and she made her bed so she can sleep in it. Update... Three days later. I want to start this off by saying thank you to everyone who replied to me in the OG post. You all show tough love and appreciation. I even appreciate those who were calling me a doormat, because like I said in the previous post, it woke me the heck up. I won't be staying with Andrea. She lied and manipulated me and Cassie for far too long for me to stay with her. The fact that she stole from me, Cassie, and Cassie's grandparents makes this as close to unforgivable as it gets. The most wronged party here is Cassie. She has an amazing future ahead of her, and I refuse to let her future go to waste because my wife made such selfish choices. Also, I'd like to take the time to answer some questions, some of which I answered in the OG post, but I'll post it here so everyone can see it. Over half the money in the account came from Cassie's grandparents, aka Andrea's parents, Cassie's bio's dad's parents, and my parents whom she also calls grandparents. This money came in the beginning, which is why I knew how much she was supposed to be in there. I never handled the account, although I claimed Cassie as my daughter, she's only my stepdaughter officially. As such, her mother handles all financial matters related to her. I simply gave her money to put into the account and she showed me, probably doctored pictures. My belief is that she pocketed the cash whenever I gave her money. I did notice all the stuff she was buying. She claimed that they were either on sale or because she got a work bonus. She makes a very good living and I thought that was reasonable with money so I said alright. I did ask her though why she needed so many Louis Vuitton shoes. She just shrugged it off. And although people can't wrap their heads around it, it's very easy to spend 170000 A large chunk of the money went to buy a Mercedes, which I thought was a lease. She had a 7-year-old Lexus that, according to her, her friends were laughing at. Keeping up appearances for her wealthy friends is very important to her. Casey and Andrea uh, did not get along for a variety of reasons. Allegedly, Casey takes a lot after her deceased father, and Andrea can't relate to her at all. Or maybe doesn't try hard enough. Casey much prefers me to talk. We have apparent-child boundaries, but Casey considers me one of her best friends. Her words, not mine. After my final update on the original post, I talked to Andrea deep into the night. She went back and forth with me on admitting to Cassie what she did. She said that she or even both of us could get loans and take care of the money then. I said she had a problem that she needed to make amends, which was talking point from here. When I threatened her with divorce, she agreed to tell her so long as I don't divorce her. I guess she's afraid of losing everything. The afternoon was set Cassie down and told her the facts. She thought we were just kidding at first, but when she realized we weren't kidding, she got extremely upset. I'll spare you the details, but she and Andrea got into an extremely loud and vicious shouting match. 
Cassie called her some truly awful names, and Andrea, while she did not curse at her, tried to defend herself by start getting angry at the name she was being called. They were so loud, the neighbors called the police. I had to awkwardly explain. Uh, the situation of them while hoping they did not think I was some kind of wife beater. Cassie told Andrea that she never wants to speak to her again and that she never wanted a dime of her money and stormed off. I asked Andrea at this point to stay with her sister indefinitely while we give Cassie and me some space. She didn't want to go. She fought me to stay. But I told her me and Cassie needed time apart from her, so she packed her crap and went to her sister's house. As for Cassie, she went to her room and locked the door. She let me in after I told her that her mother left. She cried in my arms and expressed that her future is now ruined. I told her it's not, that I would cover her college from my retirement, and that I would make it right. She doesn't exactly know what a 401k is yet, but she told me that she doesn't want me to work until I'm 90, like the people at Walmart just because of her. I just told her she's worth it and that you do stupid things for people you love. She said that she would start looking for scholarships and maybe other schools where she could get a full ride, since she does have excellent grades and extracurriculars. I then admitted Andrea wanted me to take the fall for her, and I did consider it, but I came to my senses. She got upset with me and told me that would have been the stupidest thing I could have ever done. She said she wouldn't have believed it anyways, and I only would have made her more upset at her mother. She told me that she doesn't blame me and that she's not mad at me for the money being gone, but she's mad that I want to cover for her mom. I apologized for that and we talked and cuddled for a while longer before calling it a night. The next morning, I get a call from Andrea's parents asking if the story was true. Cassie had told them the story and they were calling to confirm. I had the voice recordings and bank statements to prove it. Oh boy, they were livid but begged me not to leave Andrea for this and to try to help her through her addiction. I told them I wasn't sure about that yet and hung up. A while later, my parents called and asked me about it, so I confirmed once again. They were probably more mad than Cassie was, all things considered. They threatened to press charges. I told them to calm down and let me handle it. Cassie's doing okay, she's still a little shell-shocked, but she seems to be taking it as well as one could hope for. I made her pancakes this morning, and that seemed to brighten her up. Blueberries. I asked her if she wants to do therapy, and she said she'll think about it. I'll be doing therapy for myself. Andrea has been calling to talk, but I'm just letting it ring. So she's leaving a voicemail, and she's offering anything to make it right. Money. Sex favors, you name it, but it's not going to work. I feel horrible for Cassie, especially so close to Christmas. I think I'm going to get her Billie Eilish ticket since that's her god. I don't make up for it all, but it could go along with helping her feel better. So that's it, guys. I'll update you if anything else happens, but I think it's pretty normal, much of it. Thanks again for all the tremendous help. So here's an interesting comment, let's read it. I knew that she was a lost cause in the instant that she said the individual counseling, couples counseling, and addiction counseling conditions were steep, but fair. That's even the bare minimum of things you should have done when you steal almost $200,000 to fund your addiction. And yet she's so delusional that she literally thinks the incredible gift of such low consequences was steep. Then throw on top that she tried to wiggle her way out of the consequences by having her husband take the blame as someone she victimized. So guys, let me know, do you think it was absolutely ridiculous that this person's complaining about therapy? How about you complain about going to prison for stealing $200,000? Let me know your thoughts, drop it in the comment section below, and we'll turn our attention to the final story. Found out my best friend has been using my pictures to catfish a guy she's been talking to since 2015. Man, I don't know where to go from here, so I thought I'd ask. 
My best friend, we'll call her Maggie, and I met our freshman year of college. We're now roommates and moved in together two years ago. In 2015, my best friend spent spring break a couple states away and matched with a guy on Tinder. When she came back to campus, she immediately told me about him and how amazing he was and how they only went out to dinner once, but they were talking 24-7. I got super excited and asked to see a picture. That was the only picture of him she's ever shown me. Over the past five years, he's literally been her whole world. She talks about him constantly. She's always on her nose and her phone. She gets clingy when he takes too long to text back. She's cried to me a few times because she's lurked on his social media and seen he was around other girls. My roommate doesn't have social media herself. I'd asked a few times why they've never met up again, and she said they're both just too busy and don't have the money for the trip. I even told her that he could stay with us and that would save him some money. He sent presents and even flowers on Valentine's Day every year. They've basically been dating this whole time. So yesterday, my roommate picked up a shift at work and was gone. I got a knock on the door and I opened it to a guy. He says, hi, and I give a confused, hi. And then he barges in and scoops me up into a hug. He starts saying, I thought you were working. I was hoping your roommate was here so I could surprise you when you get back. I'm so confused. I immediately get down and back away and let him know I have absolutely no clue what he's talking about and my brain can't even process what's happening. Then he looks confused and says, Maggie? And I'm like, no, that's my roommate, dude. My roommate and I look nothing alike, so I'm even more confused. Then something kind of clicks and I think, oh my god, is this the guy she's been dating? So I say, wait, are you Adam? And he gives me a very slow, yeah. And I get excited and say, oh my gosh, I bet Maggie's going to flip out. I can't believe you're here. Well, his demeanor completely changes. Like literally 100% changes. He asks me what I'm talking about. I'm Maggie. And I tell him, no, I'm Summer, Maggie's roommate. At this point, I'm still completely missing something, and he's just pieced together. He says two words, holy duck, and looks like he doesn't know what to say. Eventually, he asked if he could sit down, and I invite him in. He then proceeds to tell me for the past five years, he's thought he's been talking to me. Every picture he's ever seen of Maggie has actually been pictures of me. I'm completely dumbfounded, and we don't know what to say to each other at first. So, he gets out his phone and shows me all the proof. He has tons of pictures of me saved on his phone and went to their messages and showed me proof that she's been sending them to him. I felt and still feel completely sick to my stomach. So, I get out my phone and show him real pictures of her. I tell him maybe they could just talk when she gets off work and he's so mad at this point. I say maybe we should call her first and let her know he's here. So I do that and she starts flipping out, saying she's not coming home. Tells him to leave and that she won't talk to him. He calls her and starts yelling at her over the phone. After everyone calms, she eventually comes home. He's hurt and accusing and she's crying and I'm just sitting here awkwardly. She tells him that she's still the same person he's had feelings for and he screams at her, No. I thought I was in love with your roommate. And that completely makes her break down. So I tell him maybe he should leave for the night and everyone should just have their own space. He agrees and after he leaves, she goes completely ape, crazy, psychotic. And starts throwing crap around the living room. Tells me she hates me and I start crying. It's a mess. I left to stay with a friend and I haven't been back since so I don't know what's gone down. I feel like I have no idea who the person I'm living with is, and I feel weirdly violated. Do I move out? Do I try to call her? She hasn't even texted. I don't know how to deal with this situation. Update. Thanks guys for all your advice and comments. Many saying you've been in mine or Adam's position, and it made me feel a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and just post an update because I don't think there'll be more of an outcome than this. I ended up having a phone call with Adam. Mostly because I wanted to know about the picture she sent. 
Turns out she sent pics of me in my underwear and nudes that aren't actually of me. Or her. So we're assuming she got those from Google. He feels really bad about this and is actually having a hard time with all of it. I assured him I don't blame him at all for the underwear pictures or anything like that. He ended up telling me that they actually have FaceTime, but she would never show her face, only the top of her head, which is dyed a similar color to mine. Never thought anything of this, now that I think of it, it might be really weird. And her excuse was she felt like she looked bad on video, was self-conscious, didn't have makeup on, blah, blah, blah. He said he didn't think too much of it. I don't know. He also told me he's tried a ton of times to arrange visits to meet and she comes up with excuses every single time. Said that he's been mostly content to talk through text or over the phone up until this point. Also said he's going to try to reach out to her one more time to talk about everything, but he's moving on. As for me, I'm not sure I can break my lease yet, but I'm going to go ahead and move out and end with a friend until my lease is over. We briefly talked when I went to my apartment, and she sort of half apologized, but it's still pretty hostile and defensive. So I'm going to give her space. I feel bad for her, but I don't think our friendship is going to survive this whole mess. Anyways, this has been some crazy stuff, I know. I appreciate all the response I've gotten. You guys are awesome. So, to me, the weirdest fact is that OP is the one that's being yelled at and being hostily environmental at her apartment. Let's just read a comment. It kind of airs it out. I love how Maggie's angry at Summer. Like, you've literally been using your friend as a flesh suit without her consent for years. What she did is so freaking creepy. She's also the one who gave them her address and sent her photos in her underwear. I can't comprehend how she wasn't upset about that. This feels like such a violation. For me, that would be where our friendship died and in that spot forever. I would warn the school. If she did that with me, she'll do it with others and probably worse. So guys, I have one question for you. Do you think that Maggie should reach some consequences for this creepy act? Or do you think that OP should just go ahead, cut ties with her completely, and go about her merry way? Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Take a second, subscribe to the channel if you do want to see more, as I'm here every single day. Have a wonderful one, and I'll catch you later.